the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, amen. So today, I'm not, I'm not going to preach so much on the readings, although the readings we see are centered on the baptism and the Eucharist, uh, and so indirectly, it is related to that. Apparitions, they say, are homilies from heaven. Apparitions never give us new truths. Rather, they reveal forgotten or recall to mind forgotten truths. One of the forgotten truths of our times is sacramentals. For nearly two decades, Our Lady has been calling attention to the sacramentals in all of her apparitions. In November of 1832 at Rudebach in Paris, Mary gave St. Catherine Labore the Miraculous Medal. In 1858 at Lourdes, the Blessed Mother gave Bernadette the Rosary. In 1917 at Fatima, Mary appeared, or rather she stressed the scapula and the, and the virgin, uh, the pilgrim virgin statue. And later in that year, she appeared clothed in the Carmelite order with the scapula in one hand and the rosary in the other. In the 12th century, she told St. Dominic, one day through the rosary and the scapular will the world be saved. In the 70s and 80s, in Akito, Japan, an approved apparition site, Mary appeared to a nun with the rosary. So what is a sacramental? We hear this. It's not a sacrament, but it's like a sacrament, so that's why it's called a sacramental. Well, first let's look at a sacrament. A sacrament is a visible sign, whether it's the water at baptism or the bread and wine at the Mass. It's instituted by Christ to give an inward grace. So we're seeing something visibly uh, that is really invisibly giving us the grace. We know there are seven sacraments. We know them all. But a sacramental is also a sensible sign signifying spiritual effects obtained by the prayers of the church. There are many of them. Holy water, blessed statues, rosaries, miraculous medals, the mandatum, you know, the washing the feet on Holy Thursday, stations of the cross, and two that I'll uh, highlight a little bit later, the brown scapular and the St. Benedict's medal. Now, sacraments work this way. As long as they're properly conferred, that is, as long as the priest has the right intention, they're using proper what's called matter and form, the right things and the right prayers, then the grace is conferred. The the grace that it signifies is conferred on the person, regardless of the disposition of the person or the one doing the sacrament. So I could be in mortal sin, but if I say the words at Mass, bam, the, 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 uh, the, the uh, bread and wine are transubstantiated into the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Christ, regardless of the state of my soul. If you come up here and receive in a state of mortal sin, or even if you don't believe that what you're receiving is the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Christ, you're still receiving that, although to your judgment. Okay? Now, sacramentals work a little bit different. The blessings received on a sacramental or the good work that someone does when they're doing the sacramental depends largely on the faith and love of God with which they, the sacramentals are employed. So in other words, it depends on the disposition of the person. Uh, so if, if I'm, you know, uh, don't believe in my faith is, is, is uh, less uh, or if I don't have that love for God, uh, then the grace I receive is, either, is going to be, you know, it's going to depend on that. It's going to depend on the, the, the faith that I have and the love of God that I have. So I think the one way to really show this is to point out the uh, gospel passage in St. Mark. Remember the story of uh, Yarius? He, he came and sought out our Lord. He wanted to uh, heal his daughter who was dying fast. And so our Lord said, show me the way and I'll follow you. So he's going through this big crowd Remember the lady with the hemorrhage said, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, then I'll be cured. Remember that story? And she pressed up against him and our Lord. I mean, although all these people were pushing up against him, you know, you've been in big crowds before. Our Lord said, someone touched me. And the, and the disciples said, well, of course someone touched you. I mean, you know, you're in a sea of people. He said, no, some power has gone out of me. And remember, he, he turned around and looked and the lady was fearful. And she came up and, and, and knelt down in fear and said it was, it was I. 
And he says, woman, your faith is what has saved you. Go in peace and you'll be cured of your affliction. Immediately after that, some servants from Yaris came and said, it's too late, don't waste the time of the, of the master because your, your daughter is dead. And our Lord says, hogwash, don't worry about that. Just have faith and I will make all things right. And he goes to the house, he pushes the mourners out of the room, goes in with, his parent, with her parents, he grabs the little girl by the hand and tells her to rise and she does. And so she is cured, she's brought to life. So we have two miracles in the same story, but these, they worked in completely different ways. The woman's cure took place because she took the initiative. She had the faith, she touched the him, and she was healed, her faith healed her. But the daughter, she was dead. She couldn't do the initiative. She couldn't do anything. It was her parents. So here Jesus takes the initiative. He just asked the parents to have the faith. So sacramentals are actions of the recipient, where sacraments are the action of God, of Christ. Sacraments are signs instituted by Christ to give grace through his power. They are the actions of Christ. But the sacramentals are signs instituted by the church to give grace through prayers of the church and through the faith of the recipients, and they are the actions of the church and of us. So I said I wanted to talk about two sacramentals, two great sacramentals in the church. The first one's brown scapula. We just this past week celebrated the feast of Our Lady of Mount Carmel, which is the source, the origin, if you will, of the brown scapula. The, ground, the brown scapular are basically, we know it well, most of you are wearing it, hopefully. Most of you have been enrolled. But if not, we're going to take care of that next week. It's two pieces of, of brown wool uh, tied together by a cord. It's called a scapular because the, uh, it, the word scapular means the back, the shoulders, from the Latin uh, scapular. Uh, what we see today and what we wear is really a shrunk-down version of the original scapular. The original scapular was a, a, a piece of material that basically was a, a narrow rectangular piece of material with a hole in it. You put it over your head and hung down to about your knees. If, when you go out the door, if you look at the statue of Saint uh, Scholastica, you will, you will see that uh, clearly. You won't see it on Saint Benedict because uh, his, his garments are covering it, but you'll see it clearly on Saint Scholastica. So th- what we wear is a small down version. Okay. Now, on July 16, 1251, the Blessed Mother appeared to St. Simon Stock. And her promise was that the scapular would be a sign of salvation, a protection in danger, and a pledge of peace. Whoever dies wearing the scapular, she said, would not suffer eternal fire. It is undoubtedly the most powerful sacramental in existence. It is undoubtedly the most powerful sacramental in existence. Now, the garment of grace is a tangible sign of the Blessed Mother's patronage, protection, and solicitude on behalf of her devotees. One should kiss the scapular first thing when rising, in the morning, and whenever you take it off or have to take it off or put it on, hopefully that's not often, we should do the same thing, kiss it, because it reminds us to ask the Blessed Mother to preserve us this day from sin and the occasions of sin. Now, the act of wearing Mary's scapular is a form of consecration to her. A consecration, we know, is a pledge by which a person or thing is set apart and dedicated to the service of God or another sacred person, purpose, rather. In October of 1917, Our Lady of Fatima held out the brown scapular to the three children, making them understand completely and fully that she wanted everyone to wear it. In 1936, Our Lord appeared to St. Lucy and he said that he wanted the devotion to his mother's garment, that is the brown scapular, to rank up with a devotion to his sacred heart. And by wearing the scapular, we say to her, without saying any words at all, that we venerate her, that we love her and we trust her, and we tell her 
this every moment of the day just by wearing it. This is truly a shortcut to heaven. Let me make that clear. Because she promised St. Simon Stock that anyone fulfilling the conditions for wearing the brown scapular would be freed from purgatory through the intercession of the blessed, through her, soon after death, but especially on Saturday. Now, she didn't say, as some uh, documents uh, have, are uh, falsely stated, that she would release the soul from purgatory the first Saturday after death. It doesn't say that. The church cleared that up centuries ago. That, is, uh, that f- false statement has come down even to this day. But what it does say and what the church has said through many approbations is that soon after death, but especially on Saturday, because that's her day. What are the conditions that we need to do? Well, first of all, we need to be enrolled just once in the confraternity of, of Our Lady uh, Our Lady Scapular, Mount Carmel. Most of the time this is done when you make your first communion. But if you have not done that, uh, older children, teenagers, and adults, then I would urge you, I would exhort you uh, greatly to get this done. We will do this after both Masses next Sunday. So we all must get enrolled the one time. We must wear it all the time, not take it off. In fact, John Paul, St. John Paul II, when he was shot and they rushed him to the hospital, he told the doctors, do not take my brown scapular off. We must re- uh, live a life of purity and observe in the sixth and ninth commandments according to our state and life, and we must pray the rosary daily. Okay, that's not that much to ask for, you know, having almost an insurance, assurance to get into heaven. You know, on the same day that St. Simon Stock was given the scapular, he was called to the bedside of, a, of an unrepentant man. Uh, a man's brother said, uh, Father Simon, please come to my brother. So Simon Stock got there. The man was unrepentant. He placed his scapular on the man and said, Blessed Mother, okay, today you made this promise. You better make good on it. And with that, the man converted made a good confession. He died later that night, and he appeared to the saint, saying he confirmed that it was through the scapular that he owed his uh, conversion and ultimately his salvation. In 1845, there was a ship going from England to Australia called the King of the Ocean, and they had to go around the Cape Hope, a very uh, uh, treacherous body of water, and they actually went into a hurricane and the, the, the waves were coming over and the ship was sinking and there was a Protestant minister with his family on the bow of the ship praying for mercy. God, God help us. There was a young Irishman, John McAuliffe, who was a crew member and he quietly just opened his shirt off, took the scalpel out, made the sign of the cross of the scalpel over the ocean, threw it back. The sea immediately calmed but not before one last wave washed on the deck, bringing back the brown scapular. The Protestant ministers saw that, questioned him, inquired, and converted to the Catholic faith. Louis XIII, King Louis XIII, after hearing that one of his soldiers was saved because a bullet was stopped and actually flattened uh, by the scapular, inquired, wanted to see it, and by seeing that, Uh, he wanted to be immediately enrolled in the Brown Scapular. This past Sunday, I was, rather this past summer, well, we're in the summer. When is it? I guess past spring. I was called to a hospital in uh, Newport News, uh, and the lady was dying, put the Brown Scapular on her, and she didn't want it to come into the church. So, and she was received. So so many, many great miracles, uh, thousands of them. St. Claude de la Colombier said that because all the forms of our love for the Blessed Mother and all its variation, various modes of expression cannot equally be pleasing to her and therefore do not assist in the same degree to reach heaven, I say without a moment's hesitation that the brown scapula is the most favored of all. No devotion has been confirmed by more numerous authentic miracles than 
the brown scapular. Now, the Medal of St. Benedict is one of the oldest and the most highly honored medals in the church. Because of the extraordinary number of miraculous occurrences, both physical and spiritual, attributed to this medal, it became popular as the Devil Chasing Medal. On the front, as depicted in our uh, beautiful stained glass window, we see the image of St. Benedict standing in front of the altar, holding the cross, which he uh, was so um, trusting of, uh, and uh, the, the, the book, his rule that he wrote in his other hand. And written in large letters in, a, in the circular uh, margin, it says, May his presence protect us in the hour of death. The one reason why the, the Medal of St. Benedict is so efficacious uh, for those dying. St. Benedict is considered one of the patrons of the dying because he had such a happy death. Uh, he was standing before the Blessed Sacrament when he took his last breath. On the back of the, of the medal, we see the cross of St. Benedict, the words CSPB, which stand for the cross of our Holy Father. You see that every time on the floor mat, every time you go out the front door. Also, on uh, horizontally and vertically, uh, these letters that form a cross, they uh, say, May the cross, Holy Cross be my light, <clears throat> to, de- to show, depict to the complete trust that he had in the cross. And on the other way, it says, Let not the dragon be my guide, because that shows his refusal, as ours should be, to bear the yoke which the devil would put on him. Around the circular part of the, uh, of the metal, it says, Be gone, Satan, and suggest not to me thy vain things. This is to depict the story of St. Benedict where, when he was still living in the cave uh, uh, and he would be meditating on spiritual things, a black bird would come to distract him, to try to uh, tempt him on vain things of the world, and he made the cross over it and the thing would vanish. And that's depicted in the image with the, the black bird uh, uh, at the foot of St. Benedict. And on the other word says, the cup thou proffers me is evil, drink thou thy own poison, which uh, depicts the story of the evil monks who tried to poison St. Benedict uh, to get rid of him. And when he made the sign of the cross over the, the poison cup, it shattered. And that is also depicted uh, in the image as well as our statue in the back. The life of St. Benedict was characterized by a powerful and all-embracing love for God, a su- serene dedication to a life based on prayer, and absolute truth in the providence of God. The medal acts as a reminder to the one wearing it, of the virtues that St. Benedict practiced during his life and serves as an outward and concrete sign of the person's interior commitment to a life marked by a constant prayerful disposition, trust in God, and practice of charity. The wearing of the medal is in itself an unspoken prayer, a plea for heavenly protection against the snares of the devil, a preservation in time of danger, and a means for acquiring spiritual favors. That is why the prayer for St. Benedict's medal, when we pray it, is actually an exorcism prayer. It's very powerful, very efficacious. That's why when we built this church in the foundation, in the concrete, we poured hundreds of blessed St. Benedict's medals in it. I just want to also, before I end, to uh, bring your attention that uh, Brian Longton has, has manufactured these beautiful St. Benedict's medals that attach to your car, the back of your car, or anything else. Uh, you know, we drive around, especially down here in Toddwater, you see tons of Masonic, Freemason things, and many of them are Catholics. And by the way, it is still an act of excommunication to be Catholic and be a member in the Freemasonry. It is an act of excommunication. And if you're excommunicated and you die and you're Catholic, you cannot be buried in the Catholic Church. So let's not forget that. That is still in effect today. What better way to show the people out there 
that, you know, we're Catholic and we're proud of it. We're not going to put up with this, you know, this satanic stuff. And so I would encourage everyone to, uh, to see Brian after Mass and maybe purchase one of these. By the way, uh, the, the proceeds go to the St. Benedict's Guild. Okay, so wrapping up here, sacramentals radiate from the Eucharist uh, as their center, uh, just as the sacraments do. There's different degrees, but this, the Eucharist is the center of all this. The Eucharist worship is the consecration of all times and all matter. A Christian's every and entire day is sanctified by it. At the end of the Mass, Ite Misaias, the priest says, basically go into the world and be a light bearer. This is the meaning of Ite Misaias. In other words, we are asking God to strengthen us with the graces that we receive in the Holy Sacrament to, as we go out and face the world. What has begun in the morning sacrifice and banquet must be developed by the day's routine of sac- sanctified acts. The Eucharist is the sacramental sanctification of a Christian's every day in this valley of tears, in fact, of his entire life. As one leaves the, the Eucharist altar and the banquet table of the New Jerusalem, he goes out into the world of a veritable Babylon, but fortified with Christ's kiss of peace, he launches the attack against Satan using the auxiliary weapons, that is, those sacramentals, which the church lavishly, lavishly dispenses to us. May the sacramentals, especially the two I've talked about, become powerful allies to the sacraments for you and hasten your sacramental sanctification to the full statue of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God bless you. Please pray for me and all priests on this beautiful day. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.